WHO recently launched two reports on violence against children, including online violence. We are going to talk today about how to recognize the signs of violence and how to prevent it. Hello and welcome to Science in Five. I'm Vismita Gupta Smith. We are talking to Sabine Wakoto Malala. Welcome, Sabine. Talk to us about violence against children. What do we mean when we say that? The numbers around violence against children are shocking and unacceptable. We know today that one in every two children aged two to 17 have suffered from sexual violence or physical violence or emotional violence in the past year. That's one out of every two children in the world. We also know that one out of five girls is sexually abused before the age of 18, and one out of 13 boys is sexually abused before the age of 18. Again, these numbers are shocking and unacceptable. So the physical impacts, such as deaths and injuries, are terrible. However, there's also lifelong consequences that come with violence in childhood. We know that children that have suffered violence will suffer from more mental health disorders, such as depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts. These children also are more at risk of engaging in uh, risky behaviors, such as smoking, alcohol consumption, drug consumption, unsafe sex. These in turn lead to non-communicable diseases, such as cancers and cardiovascular diseases. And we also know that children that suffered violence in childhood are more likely to become perpetrators of violence later in life. Sabine, can you talk to us about online violence? So online violence is a real problem. And when we look at online violence, we're really looking at cyberbullying and sexual violence online. There are a number of important initiatives today collecting data about this global online problem. However, there are two important myths that need to be clarified. The first one, is that violence is committed by strangers, otherwise known as stranger danger. In fact, we know that most of the online cyberbullying is happening by peers, acquaintances, family members. So these are the situations that we have to look out for. The second myth that needs to be clarified is that online violence is a problem on its own. In fact, in most cases, it's linked to face-to-face -face violence happening in real life. So, for example, cyberbullying in three quarters of the cases is also linked to bullying happening in the playground or in the community. Or children that are sexting are often in abusive relationship with intimate partners. Sabine, uh, if one in two children is suffering from violence, then it's happening all around us. How can we recognize the signs of this violence? Common signs that may indicate child abuse include, for example, unexplained injuries, fractures or burns, children's behavior that changes, for example, becoming very withdrawn and socially isolated or becoming very aggressive and violent. We also see children suddenly uh, changing their hygiene, so in poor hygiene, children having a decrease in academic performance, and also, of course, young children below the age of 12 that are suddenly carrying sexually transmitted diseases. It's important to note that these signs on their own are not definite signs of child abuse. However, if you do have these concerns, please do report them to health workers, social workers, or your school workers. Sabine, talk to us about how teachers, neighbors, grown-ups in the community can prevent this. So for parents, caregivers, teachers, really anyone who's in contact with children, Protecting them should be a top priority. Myself, I'm a parent of three children. They're age 16, 14, and 10. And I follow four key pieces of evidence-based advice. The first one is open communication with your children. If you can establish that open communication, the day that your child is suffering from something, he or she will be more likely to come to you. The second one is establishing clear rules. This includes, for example, curfews, structuring your day, but more importantly, knowing always where your child is in terms of the rules. Thirdly, teaching your children about consent and personal body safety. This is important at all ages, four years old, eight years old, 10 years old, 18 years old. And lastly, actively participating in your child's life. 
Again, if you're involved in your child's life, you will know when he or she is changing his or her behavior and is possibly showing signs of trouble. So to summarize, the way we can keep our children safe is through education, vigilance, communication, and having a strong relationship with them. Thank you very much, Sabine. That was Science in 5 today. Until next time then. Bye-bye.